the H22 pulleys are finally ready and they've been tested. We are happy with them. We have them in two configurations. This is the regular size blow pulley, the 3.4, and we are offering an upgraded pulley, which is a 3.2. This gives you approximately a three PSI increase. So what makes these so special? Well, you've seen how the configuration looks. I'll put a picture on the screen. This is the blower pulley. Then there is this pulley driving it through a really short belt with a tensioner pulley. And then this one over here is connected via a shaft. And this is driven by the crank pulley. I used to install these kits 20 plus years ago. We always had issues with abuse to chew belts up. You could never get enough belt tension, especially how tiny this is. I mean, look at this. It's not much bigger than my thumb. Getting belt wrap on here is difficult. It's a six rib, but it's still hard to get enough belt tension without it slipping. Stock boost, we used to see it go from six PSI to four and a half on the top because it would slip on the top. Then you would crank the belt so tight you was afraid you was gonna break something and then it would hold the boost all the way to the top and then eventually start slipping. This is the factory setup right here. These are just smooth anodized black. This is what they look like. This is a used kit. You can see why these had belt issues being so tiny. Now look at the texture that is on the grip tech pulleys right here. If you have never experienced this before, the closest thing I can say, it feels like is, it feels like sandpaper. It feels like 80 grit sandpaper. It's got a unique texture on there. Let me get it to focus. You've seen it on their site. Now, we're electing for the more aggressive texture on these smaller pulleys because these need the most tension. Now, this is the factory size right here. We're gonna offer this, just like I said, like this. This is a kit. It's gonna be the three pulleys come together. This is a stainless hub. There is four bolts that hold that on. It makes it much easier to surface. And then we have the option if you want the 3.2. Like I said, three PSI increase. But this is in the store now. You're gonna use the factory belt if you're running the 3.4, which is the standard size pulley. We don't have exact sizing on this yet, but you can do a quick test. It's essentially a 25 millimeter shorter belt. Depends on what kind of belt you're getting. Your conventional pulley is anodized aluminum. So it's just got the ribs in there and it's smooth. This isn't the most scientific test, but this is something just to give you a quick idea. When you get the pulley, I want you to try this and just hold it like this and you can feel how easy the belt slips over there. Of course it's rubber, it's got a little bit of tension, but it's not a whole lot. I discovered the GripTech pulleys way back when we were tuning a uh, supercharged Corvette and it was slipping belts and the customer provided a GripTech pulley and it fixed it immediately. Even with less belt tension, the boost stayed solid all the way up. So you put this on right here and you can just hear the belt. It's like sandpaper. And I mean, I'm just kind of holding it the same way. It takes quite a bit more tension to get it to slip. So the idea of this is to get better traction on that pulley without putting as much side load. Putting side load, think of this as being your supercharger shaft and you're putting a ton of side load on it and then spinning it and putting heat and vibration. I've damaged superchargers. I broke a shaft on a supercharger with worn out pulleys and bearings and tensioners and some of the plastic tensioners were melted. So these work really well until you try this. This is a game changer. You're gonna have so much more boost with this less belt tension, less belt wear, less component damage. This is a game changer. All right, Mr. Gribble, this is your order. You are the one that give us the pulleys for testing. So we have held up our end of the bargain and you're getting a free boost upgrade for your help. So thank you so much. I'm not gonna show your name, but this is going out to you tomorrow. You are officially the first one to receive. These are coming back in stock. Sorry that they sold out so fast. I didn't realize how popular they are. We did reorder all the materials. So as soon as we can get caught up, we'll be building more of the titanium tubes for the S2000. Parts just came in. We ordered this for a customer that changed his mind. 
and unfortunately I kind of took it uh, I didn't get a deposit so I paid for all this but I wanted to show you this in case it's something you want to add to one of your packages we don't offer this in the store it's not a service we're gonna offer but if we build your car it's something we're gonna do as part of the build so this is the blue stitch wheel which just looks really cool I've got to say, if I was building a white car, I really like the white with the blue accent, kind of like I did on my ZR1. In fact, it came with blue stitching. But this is the cobalt blue seat belts. This is our blue stitched shift boot. We carry this in the store. The steering wheels we're only going to do if we're building a car. Uh, most of the time, I will keep one wheel to send off and have pre-made. Then we can switch down your car. This is Napa leather, by the way. Now, it seems like leather has many variations and different qualities. This has that really nice feel to it. It's got the real strong leather smell. This we added the stripe. It's an option. You don't have to do the stripe. I just like it. It gives that car, you know, the real sporty look. But if we're building a car for you in the future, if it's a, a white car, silver car, whatever you would want to go with a, a contrast in stitching, uh, this is available this would go well in Laguna Blue or even white if you wanted to do the blue and white. But I wanted to show you this. This is something you're considering. Let us know. I have this combination in our red S2000. Of course, I did red stitching. I really like the red. But when you see the blue, it looks so nice. I mean, it's just that more special look to the car. The S2000 is such a fantastic car, but the inside is a little plain. This just adds a bit more of a modern touch many cars are offering stitch in package now in fact the nsx type s it's funny they offer different color stitching even though it's a one-year car i feel like that's something that they should have done right from the get-go anyway there you go that's what it looks like in blue these are available in many different colored options so we have kind of turned into the s2000 channel so if you tuned in waiting to see something s2000 related let's share with you what we're doing to this car or actually what we have done the car is finished it is sitting here waiting for the customer to pick it up. You ready? Here it goes. So this S2000 is here for some upgrades. So it is going to be more track duty usable. So this is what he's getting right here. We'll show you step by step what we do. So this is all good preventive maintenance, especially for a lot of high revving and a lot of track use. So other than that, this car is pretty much stock. All right, so we have an, a bolt-in oil pan baffle and some spoon sports magnetic drain plugs. These are the spacers for the pan baffle. Let's get it out of here. Ooh. I like that. So this bolts in with the aforementioned spacers and I'll have a little bit more energy to put them in after having some coffee. All right, so this is the new banjo bolt. If you look at it, it has four holes. If you look at the one I just pulled out of the car, it also has four holes. So either someone has been in here or Honda superseded the part number before this car was uh, released. So it already has the, the, uh, the correct oil squirter bolts in it. So I'm gonna put this one back in and forget about it. The customer supplied us this. If you've never looked into it, Blackstone, they do a full oil analysis, just as it says. They send you this for free. You follow the instructions. You're gonna basically drain some of your, I'll take it apart and show you. You're gonna drain some of your oil in this and send it back to them. They do a full analysis to tell you what is in it, what it should have, what it doesn't have. If you've got any kind of bearing issues, if there's something wearing out, they can find it in the oil and they let you know. It's something that I've done on many of my cars, especially if I buy a used car. I will do this first and then if I see something I don't like, a little bit more confidence if you are gonna track your car. I'll let the customer fill everything out, but that is the oil sample right there. I've screwed the tap, uh, cap on really tight, put it in the bag, and then I'll put it all together for him to send it back. You're gonna fill in 
obviously all of this information and then put your little sticker. It's kind of like doing a pea sample, but with your oil. So the oil pan is back on and sealed. We usually like to let them sit uh, overnight before we put oil back in them. It shouldn't really affect it, but if you've got the option, I would usually recommend you do that. Let it sit overnight, then put fresh oil in just so it helps prevent any possible oil leaks. In a past video, we showed you how to change your injector clips, and we now carry them in the store, and it's been a big problem over the years. Well, now what we're starting to see, not just now, but we've seen it more and more, is the clips right here on the 2000 to 2005s. So this tab breaks, and it doesn't stay on. There's some little vibration, it comes off, and of course, you're gonna have a lot of problems with that, including misfires and not starting. This one's the same way. It just pulls off the little tab is broken right there it should have the little tab so we just got these in i'm going to use this car to do a demonstration and then we'll put a link in the store so you can buy these if you're running into the same issues had a few people that said they replaced their coil clips notice that these snapped too which is a big problem and they're hard to find well we found the manufacturer and we have a batch of them let's use this one to show you how easy it is to do and then it's something we can offer in the store. We're gonna sell these as a pair, but this is what one plug looks like. It's gonna come just like this. It's gonna have the rubber seal in there already, and then separate right here. This holds the pins and it stops the pins pulling out. We're gonna sell this as a pair. It's gonna come with a pair of these and then a new tool to install it. If you bought our injector clips, you're gonna have two of these. They're a pretty handy little tool. I use them in the shop a lot. So this is what it's gonna look like. Usually it's just the tab that's broken. So that blue clip still needs to come out. So the 2000 to 2005 has two of these. One is on the top of the valve cover here, and then one is down by the side. So just like we showed you in the coil clips, you're gonna pull that blue connector out first. I replaced this clip already, but I'm gonna basically do it again just so you can see how it comes apart these don't get destroyed like the coil clips. The coil clips fall apart completely. These tend to just break the tab. So you're gonna remove that little blue retainer clip first. Make sure the tab is point upwards. So you're gonna use the tool provided and you see the little square in the bottom, there's one on each side. You're gonna put it in there and then basically lever it back. Put your thumb over the retainer just so it doesn't pop off and hit you in the face or you lose it in the engine bay. Right back. Nice and easy, little at a time. Don't force it, if it doesn't come right away, just give it a second. And you can see the orientation of this, which way around it goes. So we're working with the tab to the top. The little slot at the bottom under the pins, that's where the little retainer clip is. That's the little clip that you're gonna put the screwdriver towards the top of that slot and bend it down. Then the wire will release. I'll show you a diagram of this in a minute. Again, don't force it, little at a time. They do come out pretty easy once you get it lined up right. If you'd imagine the clip like this, this is the pin. This is the orientation that you're putting the tool. You're basically bending this little flap down and then this pin will come out. Once you push it back in, the little snap that you feel is that fastening back in place, holds that pin in there. When you put it back in, make sure both clips go in with a snap. Then of course, put your retainer back in. This is a little stiff going in, but that stops those pins coming out. Always check to make sure they're seated all the way. All right, let's see how it sounds. So part of doing the AP2 retainers and keepers, we'll do a valve adjustment. Sounds nice and smooth. So this is pretty much track ready now. I'm sure he's going to be doing the rest of his fluids. Uh, always recommend doing brake fluid, at least DOT4, something higher temp for the track use. So a few things that we did, of course, the baffle for the oil pan, the modification to the valve cover baffle, which is drilling the holes. There's a bunch of information on that, a little bit time consuming, but definitely worth it. And then of course, 
the uh, engine oil and diff fluid. This one's good, ready to go back. He bought a few things from us. Uh, he bought the master rebuild kit so he could do it himself, which is cool. And a couple of little dress up parts under the engine bay. So this one is done and the customer is on his way to pick it up. Don't know how I'll 